Hi everyone. Today' objectives is graphs of quadratic equations and functions. A few vocab to start. The graph of y equals x squared is a parabola. So anything with a, a x squared is the highest exponent is going to have a parabola. Then the next thing, quadratic equation in two variables. An equation that can be written from the form y equals a x plus b y and b x plus c. Y equals a x squared plus b x plus c, where a A, B, C are real number, and A cannot equal to zero. That is a quadratic equation. Axis of a symmetry: a line that divides a graph into two symmetrical halves. That means exactly the same halves. Vertex of parabola: the lowest point on the parabola that opens up, or the highest points on the parabola that opens down. So the lowest point is going to look like this. That will be the lowest point, and the highest will be looking like this. That's going to be the The highest point, so that's why it's facing down. All right. To start off the the、uh, to start start off how to graph,、uh, let's look at example number one. Example number one has three blanks asking what's a, b, and c. And if you look at above on the equation right here that we talked about, a is the number in front of x squared, b is the number in front of the x, and c does not have x involved. So let's look at the example one. Example one: the a is one, b is negative six, c is three. And because if you look at it, the number in front of x squared, which is the a, is positive. The parabola is gonna opens upward. You have a positive a parabola facing up. If you have a negative a parabola facing down. Positive, happy face. So therefore, it's a smiley face. And then if it's a negative facing down, it therefore For it's gonna be a front. Face happy rice bowl and sad sad rice bowl. You know, if you are happy rice bowl, you fill it with lots of rice. You'll be happy. It's positive.、And、if you have a sad rice bowl, it will be negative. The all the rice is gone from the bowl, so therefore it's be negative. A is positive facing up. A is negative is facing down. In this case, because A is positive one, the problem is going to be facing up. To start finding axis of symmetry, well, we need to use a formula negative b over. Two a, and that is the line that cuts the parabola in half exactly right at the middle. Previous blanks that we filled out, a is going to be one and b is going to be negative six. So I'm going to use those numbers. And please make sure that you write it in correctly. Negative b, so it's negative six. Put it in parentheses. Two times one, which is a, and then that's going to be six over two, three. And after you do that, that will be your axis of symmetry. So x equals Equals three cuts the parabola as three in half. Now, if you think about it, that's gonna be the ones that goes up and down right in the middle. So the highest point or the lowest point is gonna be related to that line. So to get the highest point, which is gonna be called the vertex, vertex is where the highest point and the lowest point. We are going to take the three, plug into the original equation. You are taking this number and plug it into the original equation. Why is Equal to three to the second power minus six times the third. Um, three to the second power minus six times three plus three, and that is where you plug in your x symmetry line right in there, right in the location of your x, because we are trying to locate where is it on that line. So that's going to be nine minus eighteen plus three, and when you add them all together, you are going to get negative six. Negative six will be your vertex. So what you have for that point is going to be three from before. That's your negative b over two a, and then negative six is going to be your vertex. So I'm going to plug that in on the graph three and negative six, three and negative six. Your vertex. We have the vertex. We have the symmetry line. So now what we're going to do is we are going to identify all the other points. It's going to be a little bit difficult where to pick the points. The points could be picked anywhere. Best way. To pick points is right around your symmetry line. Since my symmetry line is at three, I'm gonna go two, one, or. 
four, five. Now, reason for that is because if you sometimes pick some points, like maybe even ten, it might be way too big and it will be off the graph. So the best way is just to pick two points to the left of your symmetry line or two points to the right of your symmetry line. Draw my chart, my x and my y, and I'm gonna get two points on the right, two points on the left. And to do that, I'm gonna put my vertex right in the middle, three and negative six, and I'm gonna pick. Two points to the left, two points to the right. Think about this: since they are symmetry, points on one side is gonna match to the points between the right hand side and the left hand side. Points would you pick to plug it in? I would usually pick the smaller one. So I'm gonna start with one to find the other part of the points. Again, you plug into the original equation, and in this case, if you look, that's gonna be x squared minus six x plus three. So I'm gonna use x squared minus six x plus three. And just so I can be having an equation right there, so I can look at. So that's going to be one square minus six times one plus three, and that's going to be one minus six plus three, and that's going to be negative five plus three, and that's negative two. So that's going to be one comma negative two. And then the next one, if you put in, that's going to be two square minus six times two plus three, and that's going to be four minus twelve plus three, and that is going to be five. Order pair is going to be two comma five. And the next one. Is gonna be you know three comma negative six. Oh, I'm sorry, negative five, and that's negative six. And then if you go to the other side, that means the pairs will match up. That means they should have the same number as the y, and this one should have the same number as the y. So let's double check just to make sure. So you have four square minus six times four plus three. That's gonna be sixteen minus twenty four plus three. Well, six minus twenty four is gonna be Negative a plus three. That is going to be negative five. Okay, so that's going to be four comma negative five. And you can definitely check to make sure the other point it is. But for the purpose of not dragging everything through so long, I'm just going to put down five comma negative two. Those are the x and the y. And then I am going to plug it in. And then just to see, proper way to write this, it should be negative two right here. And then that's going to be five comma negative two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the points. So in this case, you have negative six on one side, and next points is two negative five. So two negative five is going to be right here. Two negative five is right here. That's two comma negative five. Then we also have four comma negative five. It's just going to the other side. So I'm going to try to use a different color. So they match on the other side. See that because that symmetry line cuts in half. Then the next point is. Going to be a one and negative two, so one and negative two, one and negative two, which is right here, and then it's going to pair it off. That's two space from the symmetry line. Go two space on the other side. See two space. I'm going to two space, and that will be my parabola. And to label the points, one comma negative two, and that's going to be five comma negative two, and and then the point that's in purple on the other side, this one is going to be at four comma. Negative five, and that is how you do a parabola problem. We are going to answer the questions. Some of them are just a review. Determine whether the graph is a function or not. Remember, if it's a function, you can draw the vertical line. So if you draw the vertical line, let's just say this vertical line. Is it gonna touch only one place? Sure. So therefore, I'm gonna erase the vertical lines. The vertical lines gonna vertical line testing is a yes. I would like you guys to recall from the previous time when we talk about domain and range. Domain is the x value. Remember, it's the smallest number with the biggest number. So there's a couple ways of writing it. If you look at the blue value, we have the smallest number, ne negative infinity, three, and positive infinity. In this case, the smallest value is gonna be negative infinity. Now, what's the biggest value? A positive infinity. That's one way of writing it. And you also can say x is an element of all real numbers. That's a shorthand. That's just saying x is 
all the numbers on the number line. X is an element of a real number. This is called an element. That means it's part of the group. X is part of any number on there. Then what's the range? Well, let's take a look at the range. The range, I'm going to use a different color and then talk about maybe um, a green. If you take a look at, that's the Y value right here. Y value and Y value. Now, if you look at carefully, the Y value really is going to be starts at positive positive infinity, negative 6, and positive infinity. So really, it's going to be the smallest number, negative 6. But since we know that's the exact number, we're going to make a bracket, negative 6, and then positive infinity. And then the y value, how do you write that? In the set notation, it's going to be y is going to be greater than and equal to negative 6. And sometimes you will even see that in set notation, that's going to be y slash y is greater than or equal to negative 6. Six. Those are three ways you can write it. Or right here, you can have also x slash x is an element of all real numbers. On to example number two. You should be able to tell me what's your a, b, c, and parabola goes up or down symmetry line and vertex and the table. So I'm going to put all those numbers together. You can pause it and work through it and then we can come back and I will try to discuss it. Here's the answer for example number two. You should know a, B, and C is negative 3, 6, and 2 because that's in front of all the x squared and x and no x. And it's facing down because your A equals negative 3, which is negative. And then you plug in negative B over 2A to get your x coordinates. And that's also your x symmetry line. So that's going to give you this is x equals 1. And then that's the symmetry line. Then what you're going to do is you're going to plug in the co x coordinate back into the original equation. I wrote it down for you. So plug it in. So it's going to be 1 and plug into the equation. And then you get the 5, which is the y coordinates. And that gives you the order pair of vertex 1, 5, which is right here. That's going to be your vertex. And that's going to be 1, 5. And then what you're going to do is once you find that, you are going to put your vertex in the middle right here. And then you are going to pick two points before and after. So in this case, the number before 0 on the left-hand side is going to be 0 and negative 1 on the right-hand side is 2 and 3. And then we're going to plug it in and that's how I get my graph. All right. And then the next thing is determine whether the graph is a function. Yes, it is a function because by the vertical line testing, it's going to be just going up and down. And there's only hitting one point at once. And what is the domain? Domain is still x value, which is always going to be negative and positive infinity. Because if you think about it, you can pick any numbers on the x. You can keep on going. You can have negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative infinity. And the the x on the positive side can keep on going. But when you're talking about y, so that's why it's x is an element real number. And then what is the range? Well, the range will never go past 5. So that's the biggest number is at 5 and it's a bracket. And it's only going down to the negative infinity. And so therefore, if you look at your y value, it's negative 7, 2, 5, 2, negative 7. So therefore, 5 is your biggest number. Sorry, it's going to be a positive 5 right here. And then that's going to be a positive 5. So positive 5 is going to be the highest value. Therefore, that's how you do a problem for number 2. So I show you one going up, one going down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick on number 3. And I would like you guys to finish 3 and uh, check the answers. 3, if you look at it, the a value is going to be 3 because that is the number in front of x squared. The b value, because I don't have anything related to x, is actually 0. And your c is negative 5. And then you should know the rest of the stuff, follow the same routine, and then check back your answers. Okay, here's the answers for number three. The only thing I want you guys to be careful is the y fx is the same as y down right there. And the graph is just the same way. Finding the vertex is even easier. So therefore, the vertex is really right here. And the symmetry line is really x equals zero. You need to have the x equals zero or it doesn't count. Um, it's not correct. It could be y equals zero because there's graphs actually y equals zero. And then there's the labels of all the points. And there's the domain and the range. And so therefore that concludes our notes for today. Thank you so much for watching.